Is this tonight's table boy's supper? Good. Say that the boy has this tonight, and you shall have the prettiest frock that money can buy. Supper. Oh, never mind that. There's a man. A man. A word with you. What business have you here? Business that might put something in your pocket. The favourite for the Wessex Cup in training. So you're one of those damn touts. I'll show you how we serve them here. Whatever is the matter? Oh, man, Mr. Straker, at the stables, Ned, when I went to take him his supper, this man... Oh, Ned. Oh, favorite for the Wessex Cup has been spirited away and his trainer brutally murdered. By Jove! By Jove! I am afraid, Watson, that I shall have to go. rate is 53 and a half miles an hour. I have not observed the quarter mile post. Nor have I, but the telegraph posts upon this line are 60 yards apart and uh, well, the calculation is a very simple one. I presume you've um, looked into the matter. Oh, yes. Well, I've seen what the telegraph and the chronicle have to say. Well. Well, <clears throat> well it would seem that the intruder, this fellow Fitzroy Simpson, Having drunk the lad's supper with powdered opium before he was chased off, waited till he was unconscious and returned with a duplicate key. Yes. That is the case. As it appears to the police, Good of you to meet us, Colonel Ross. Never mind about that. 
Now, the race is on Tuesday. That means you have four days to recover the horse. And, of course, find Paul Straker's murderer. Silver Blaze was descended from uh, Isonomy, I understand. And every bit as brilliant as his ancestor. Which is why, until he disappeared, he led the betting for the Wessex Cup. A three to one on. Well, hardly worth a bet at that price. <laughs> Wrong, sir. Enormous sums of money have been laid on him. It's quite obvious, Watson, that there are many people who have the strongest motive to prevent Silver Blaze from running. Mm. How many have also had the opportunity? Something else again. Ah, any fresh developments? Thank you, Gregory. Mr. Holmes. Gregory. My men found Fitzroy Simpson. I have placed him under arrest. Is that wise? Oh, the circumstances are strong against him. Yes, but what is his motive? An examination of his book showed that he had five thousand pounds entered against Silver Blaze. That's why I came here, wasn't it? To try and get some inside information. I also visited Capleton. Capleton? A larger training establishment across the moor. The second favorite trains there under Silas Brown. But you do not deny that on your first visit here, you acted as described. It was my only visit, and I didn't drug the lad. Both he and the maid swear they saw a packet in your hand. It was a ten-pound note to buy information. A ten-pound note was found upon him. Against that, he spent the night on the moor. His clothing was soft. I was scared. I was carrying this. Oh, 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 oh. A Penang lawyer. Weighted with lead. Mm. Just such a weapon as might have brained a man. Hey, and to clench it, this was found in the dead man's hand. I must have dropped it as I ran. He must have come upon it by chance. The whole of dark mortal room upon. On the other hand, where's the wound? And there's no wound upon him. The state of Straker's knife would show that at least one of his assailants bears its mark. Well, there you have it all in a nutshell, Watson. Can you give me any light? Unless Straker wounded himself in the convulsive struggles which follow any brain injury. Hmm. In that case, the main point in your favor disappears. Even the dog is against him. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> yes. As you say. Now the other training stable is quite close by, I understand. Yes, and as Desborough, their horse was second in the betting, they'd have an interest in the disappearance of the favorite now, wouldn't they? Mm. The point has not escaped me. <clears throat> Silas Brown, the trainer, is known to have had very large bets on the event, and he was no friend to Bushtaker. However, we have examined his tables very carefully. There is nothing to connect him with the affair. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Excuse me. Daydreaming. 
perhaps you would prefer to go at once to the scene of the crime, Mr. Holmes. I think I should prefer to stay here a little and uh, go into one or two questions of detail. Strecker was a jockey, was he not? Until he became too heavy for the weighing chair. Did he serve you in that capacity? Five years. And since then, no. Seven as a trainer. And during that time, you never found him to be an... I always person. found him to be an excellent servant. I presume you made an inventory of all the things he had in his pocket at the time of his death, Inspector. Oh, I have the things themselves here. Box of matches. Two inches of tallow candle, briar root pipe, seal skin pouch with uh, half an ounce of long cut Cavendish. Silver watch, gold chain, five sovereigns, aluminium pencil case, some papers, and the knife. Very singular knife. I presume, as it has blood stains upon it, that is the one found in the dead man's grasp. Watson, this knife surely is in your line. Hmm. I wouldn't expect to find it in the possession of anyone other than a knife search. It is a cataract knife. I thought so. Very delicate blade devised for very delicate work. Strange thing for a man to carry on a rough expedition, especially as it wouldn't shut in his pocket. The tip was guarded by a disc of cork which we found beside the body. His wife tells us that the knife had lain for some days upon the dressing table and that uh, he picked it up as he left the room. A poor weapon indeed, but perhaps the only one he could lay his hand on at the moment. Hmm, possibly. Uh, what about these papers? Hey. All three of them are receipted hay dealers' accounts. One of them is a letter of instruction from Colonel Ross. This is a, a milliner's account for £37.15, made out by Madame Lazurier of Bond Street to William Derbyshire. Uh, Mrs. Sticker tells us that Derbyshire was a friend of her husband and his uh, letters were from time to time addressed here. Madame Derbyshire has somewhat expensive tastes. 22 guineas for a single costume. Rather heavy. However, there appears to be nothing more to learn. And uh, we may now go down to the scene of the crime. I perceive the ground is trampled up a good deal here. Yes, well, no doubt several people have been here since the body was discovered. A piece of matting has been laid here at the side. We have all stood upon that. Now, that's excellent. In this bag, I have one of the boots Staker wore, one of Fitzroy Simpson's shoes, and a cast horseshoe of Silver Blaze. My dear Inspector, you surpass yourself. Hello, what's this? Used match. I cannot think how I overlooked it. It was invisible, buried in the mud. I only saw it because I was searching for it. What, you expected to find it? I thought it not unlikely. Attacks. I've examined the ground very carefully for a hundred yards in each direction. Indeed. <laughs> I shall not have the impertinence to do it again. But I should like to take a little walk across the moors before it grows dark, that I may know my ground. And I think I'll put this horseshoe in my pocket, for luck. I wish you to come back with me, Inspector. 
There are several points on which I should like your advice, especially whether we do not owe it to the public to withdraw Silver Blaze's name from the entries for the cup. Certainly not. Let it stand. Come, Watson. question of who killed John Straker for the instant and confine ourselves to finding out what has become of the horse. Now suppose that he broke away during or after the tragedy. The horse is a very gregarious animal. Left to himself, his instincts would have been either to return to his own stables or go to the nearest, which is Capleton. Well, he's not at his own, therefore he's at Capleton. Let us take that as a working hypothesis and see what it leads us to. No loiterers here. I only wish to ask a question. Should I be too early to meet your master, Mr. Silas Brown, if I were to call at five o'clock in the morning? Why, bless you, sir. If anyone was to be about, he would be, for he's always the first stirring. But here he is now, sir, to answer your questions for himself. Oh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm much obliged to you. Oh, no, 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 sir. I, I couldn't take that. It would be more than my place is worth if you were to so much as see me touch your money. What's this, Dawson? No gossiping. Be about your business. And you, sir? What the devil do you want? Ten minutes talk with you, my good sir. I've no time to talk to every gadabout. We want no strangers here. Be off. Or you may find a dog at your heels. It's a lie. It's an infernal lie. Very good. Shall we argue about it here in public? Or talk it over in your parlor? Well, come in if you wish to. Can't keep you more than a few minutes, Watson. Now. Your instructions will be done. It shall be done. There must be no mistake. There shall be no mistakes. It shall be there. Uh, shall I change it before or not? Hmm. <laughs> no, don't. Hmm. No tricks now. Oh, you can trust me. You can trust me. Yes, I think I can. Hmm. You shall hear from me tomorrow. perfect compound of the bully, sneak, coward than Silas Brown I have yet to meet. He knows where the horse is then. Oh, he tried to bluster. <laughs> but it was those peculiarly square-toed boots of his that gave the game away. <laughs> they exactly corresponded with the impressions we found here this afternoon. But are you not afraid to leave the horse in his power? My dear fellow, he will guard it as the apple of his eye. His only hope is to produce it safe. He knows that. Colonel Ross did not impress me as a man who would be likely to show mercy in any case. I have my own methods. <laughs> That's the advantage of being unofficial. Uh. Besides, the Colonel's manner has been a trifle cavalier with me. I'm inclined to have a little amusement at his expense. Say nothing to him about this. Oh, certainly not, without your permission. After all, the question of the horse is quite minor compared with the question of who killed John Straker. And uh, you will devote yourself to that. On the contrary. We both go back to London by the night train. I have every hope that your horse will start on Tuesday. And I have little or none. Well, there it is then. 
Now I'm ready for Tavistock and the night express. I beg you to have your jockey in readiness. You have some sheep in the paddock. Who attends to them? I do, sir. Have you noticed anything uh, amiss with them of late? Oh, not of much account. In the last fortnight, sir? Well, three of them have gone lame, sir. That's a long shot, Watson. A very long shot. Goodbye, Colonel Ross. Shall see you at the races, Inspector Gregory. May I recommend to your attention this singular epidemic among the sheep? You consider that to be important? Exceedingly so. Is there any other point to which you would wish to draw my attention? To the curious incident of the dog when the horse was led out from the stables. But the dog did nothing when the horse was led out from the stable. That was the curious incident. Seen nothing on my horse. How's the betting? It is a curious part of it. You could have got 15 to 1 yesterday, but the price has got shorter and shorter. Mm. Somebody knows something, that's clear. Silver Blaze, Mark, Mark. What's that? Silver Blaze, favourite. There the numbers up. They're all six there. All six there? And my horse is running. I don't see him. Well, only five have passed. Colours are not passed. Are oh, not these, they? Eh? Never colours. That's not my horse. Not a white hair upon his body. Well, well. Here they come. Who has the yellow cap and sleeves? Desborough. Desborough's in the lead. Oh, he shot his boat, I fancy. Number four is challenging. Your colours, Colonel. Ah, it'll be too late. I think not. Anyhow, I confess I can make neither head nor tail of it. Don't you think you've kept up your mystery long enough, Mr. Holmes? Certainly, Colonel. You shall know everything. Let us go round and have a look at the winner, together. A little spirits of wine, and same old silver blaze as ever. You take my breath away. I found him in the hands of a faker. And took the liberty of running him just as he was. Dear sir, I owe you a thousand apologies. You've done me a great service by recovering my horse. You'd do me a greater still if you could lay your hands on the murderer of John Straker. I have done, sir. What? You got him? Where is he? Where is he? It may lessen his guilt if I say that it was done in self-defense and that John Straker was a man entirely unworthy of your confidence. Don't keep us on tenterhooks, man! I was prepared to believe that Fitzroy Simpson was the true culprit. Although, of course, I saw that the evidence against him was by no means complete. The first positive indication of his innocence came, paradoxically, from the enmity of the dog. We saw how the animal reacted to him when the horse was led out. It alarmed no one. Therefore, the thief could not have been Simpson.
it must have been someone the dog knew well. Which is when the immense significance of the curry occurred to me. Simpson, a stranger, could not have caused that to be served. It was too monstrous a coincidence to suppose that he happened to come along with powdered opium upon the very night when a dish happened to be served which would disguise the flavor. The culprit had to be a member of the household. Trainers have been known to enrich themselves by injuring their charges. But why and how should Straker do so? Men do not, as a rule, carry about with them other men's bills. Madame Dolisher seems to have somewhat expensive tastes. A visit to Madame Lazurier's shop answered the why of the matter. John Straker led a double life as William Derbyshire, maintaining a lady with expensive tastes in St. John's Wood. As to the how, a man who acquires a very special surgical knife may reasonably be supposed to be contemplating surgery. But surely a layman would need to practice surgical skills. It was the lame sheep which told me the method Straker had in mind. It was to slightly cut the favorite's tendon and do it subcutaneously so as to leave no trace. The lameness would be put down to a strain in exercise or a touch of rheumatism, never to foul play. Straker had to take the horse out onto the moor. So spirited a creature would have roused the soundest of sleepers when it felt the prick of the knife. It was absolutely necessary to do it in the open air. He led the animal towards the hollow where his light would be invisible. He came across the cravat which Simpson lost in his flight and picked it up, perhaps with some idea of using it to secure the horse's leg. The marks in the hollow show that the horse was uneasy. Animals scent fear, and by then, Straker must have been afraid. He got behind the horse. He got the knife out. He struck a match. That was the final straw. Here is your murderer. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> you might have been there. Uh... You've explained it all but one thing. Where was he kept? Ah, he bolted and was cared for by one of your neighbors. He must have an amnesty in that direction, I think. Must. Must? When I am called to a case, we were suffering from a plethora of surmise, conjecture, hypothesis. <laughs> the difficulty was to detach the framework of fact, of absolute, undeniable fact, from the embellishments of reporters, theorists, and, uh, if I may say, Police inspectors. <laughs> Thank you.